Do you know a child who loves to build? Our son is that child. Since he was little, he was always building with blocks and Legos. And every time we built a project, he was right there helping us. He's four now, and his imagination is exploding, and he is more independent than ever. We love watching him build. That passion. We want to nurture that in the same way our parents and our grandparents encouraged us. To do that, we built him this. This workbench was designed to be height adjustable so it will grow with your child. It can be built with nothing more than a jigsaw and a drill, so it's easy enough for a beginner, but we will show you how to get even better results with more advanced tools. A project like this is a great opportunity to practice and develop new skills. So, what are you waiting for? Come join us on this adventure! The sponsor of today's video is you. We make these videos for you guys, so if you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you already bought our workbench plans or are thinking about buying them. If so, we'd like to thank you. We hope you enjoy them, and we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to comment down below or send us a picture of your completed build. To everyone else, thank you for being here, for being part of our channel. We're glad to have you, and we hope you enjoy our videos. The first step to any project is wood selection. Getting this right means setting yourself up for success, but messing this up can mean endless headaches down the road. Plywood is generally easier to work with than hardwood since you don't have to worry about wood movement. It's also flat, dimensionally stable, and isn't likely to bow or twist. This makes it perfect for a beginner project. For a project like a workbench, a cheap sheet of sanded plywood would work great. We actually chose one with a birch veneer. We wanted a prettier finish because Pinterest is life for a creator, and it came back to bite us in the end. The veneer layer was very thin, with more defects than we originally noticed. We did our best to work around these defects, but the bigger issue was how poorly the layers were laid. There were bumps and voids, and the glue had separated in many of the spots. And because of that poor glue, we had a lot of tear out. But that's okay. This isn't a pristine piece of furniture. This is a workbench. It's going to get hit with a hammer. He might actually drill into it or cut into the work surface. It will probably get glue or paint on it. And that's okay. That's great, actually. This isn't supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to enable our son to make some amazing things. He is free to beat it up, and we can replace the work surface in a few years as the workbench grows with him. This entire project was designed so it could be done with nothing but a drill and a jigsaw. A jigsaw is one of the most beginner-friendly tools you could own. It will cut through any wood, so long as it isn't too thick. It cuts slowly enough that you can correct if you start to go off your line. It allows you to rip, cross-cut, and cut curves. You can even cut out holes and pockets with it. It's also one of the safest tools for a new woodworker. It was one of the first tools we learned how to use, and we still used it to break down sheet goods until just this year when we bought this track saw. And honestly, we should have bought one of these track saws sooner. They cost a few hundred dollars, but they make perfectly straight cuts in a fraction of the time of the jigsaw. We used to use a cordless circular saw with a straight edge, but the saw always drained batteries extremely quickly. Having a corded saw that we can hook our vacuum up to makes a huge difference. This will definitely be our new go-to tool for breaking down sheet goods. We also love how easily you can set the depth of the cut, and that it automatically retracts when you're done. This is a huge safety bonus that makes us feel much more comfortable having it around our son. He's already asking to use the tools all by himself, and we don't want to discourage that, but we also want to keep him safe. Speaking of staying safe, the table saw is one of the most dangerous tools in our shop but it's also one of the most useful and practical tools that you can own. Once the plywood has been broken down into manageable sized pieces, nothing is faster or more accurate than the table saw. It makes quick work of these rip cuts, and setting the fence allows you to ensure that your parts are all a consistent width, which is critical for parts like the drawers or boxes. And by using a crosscut sled, you can ensure that your parts are a consistent length and perfectly square. It is also a much safer and much more controlled way to cut parts on the table saw. You can clamp the parts down and keep your hands a safe distance from the blade. We highly recommend every table saw owner build a crosscut sled. 
it's worth it to invest in your safety. And that's also why we'll soon be replacing this table saw with a saw stop. We've loved using this old craftsman saw over the years, but it won't be long before our son wants to use the table saw. We want to empower him. We want to teach him how to use all of these tools, and we intend to be there with him every step of the way. But we admit that we will sleep better knowing there is one more layer of protection between his hands and the blade. Speaking of tools that every woodworker should learn to use, the router is one of the most versatile tools you can own. There are many ways to get by without using a router, and you certainly don't need one for this project. But using one can make you faster, more accurate, and dramatically improve the quality of your project. Take these edges, for example. We want to soften them to make sure our sun doesn't get any splinters and to remove the tear out. We could certainly just sand them, and we have done that in many projects in the past. But it is almost impossible to get a full radius with sandpaper, and it certainly won't be consistent from edge to edge. A lightweight trim router is perfect for jobs like this. Or take this panel that we jigsawed earlier. Our jigsaw cut wasn't perfectly straight or even, but we can fix that with a router. We just lay down a straight strip of wood and use that as a guide for our router. Then we can use a bushing and a spiral bit to trim the edge. And by stacking the two halves together, we can then flip it over and use a flush trim bit to trim the second piece and ensure they are perfectly even. Did they need to be perfectly even? Did they even need to be straight? No. This is a kid's workbench. But is this a good chance to practice skills that we'll use on nicer pieces in the future? Absolutely. And that's why we want to show it to you. To encourage you to push yourself, to pick up new tools, to learn new skills, and to grow as a maker. Speaking of growing as a maker, you'll see us using a lot of painter's tape and super glue here to hold these templates in place. It was during this project that we finally realized we just need to buy some double-sided tape already. The super glue trick is useful in a pinch, but double-sided tape is definitely more convenient if you're doing a lot of template routing. We've left a link to the tape and the router and everything else that we used in the description down below. We've only linked tools that we specifically use and would recommend, so take a look and try something new. I think it's safe to say that neither of us would be where we are today if we hadn't been encouraged to try new things. Both of us had very supportive families who helped to kindle that fire in us. My granddad introduced me to woodworking, and some of my favorite memories are building things in his shop back when I was younger. Everything from cutting boards to a trebuchet. It was amazing to me that I could create something new, that I could have an idea and see it come to life. As I got older, I continued to create. I slowly acquired more and more tools and built more and more complicated things. Anything was possible if I could just figure out how to make it. And that has stuck with me my whole life. I'm now an engineer and I design products. I'm still turning ideas into reality. And it's all thanks to that passion that started in my granddad's shop. Honestly, as a young girl, I wasn't introduced specifically to woodworking, but my family was really supportive of exploring creativity and making things in other forms. There were cases where I was introduced to tools, like going to free kid workshops at local home improvement stores. My dad also built a playset for our backyard. I jumped at the opportunity to help him cut wood and measure out pieces. Then there's my mom, who was and is still a big crafter. We would make the coolest crafts and go to scrapbooking events to put all of our photos into an album. It was a lot of fun. They both also really encouraged me with my drawing and sketching that I love to do and helped fuel my passion for design that eventually led me to architecture school. Then there was my grandpa, who was an all-around handyman. He renovated my parents' kitchen at one point, and I thought that was so cool that he could do it himself. He believed everyone needed their own toolbox when they grew up and left the house, regardless of gender. I still have and treasure that special toolbox with my name on it, and it's full of tools and fasteners that he collected over my childhood for me. Family always has a crucial role in how encouraged we are to try something, which is why we try to do the same with our son. We designed this workbench to grow with our son. The work surface can be replaced if it gets beat up, the sides extend as he grows taller, and the pegboard can be rearranged as he gets different tools. We can't wait to see what our son creates on this workbench, and we love how excited he was to build it. He's already asking when we can make him a stool for his workbench, and that's exactly what we want to encourage. 
the desire to make a stool instead of just buying one. We can't wait to see where he goes next, but we know one thing, it's going to be an adventure. See you next time. Hey friends, we hope you enjoyed this video. We took a different approach with this video and we'd love to hear your feedback down below. And if you'd like to see some more information on this build, we have just released a special Build With Us version that shows every step of the process. Click that tile on the screen and check it out.